You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Hello, and welcome to Storytime. I'm Nyla McLean. This show is a collaboration between GHS TV and the Early Childhood Program at Germantown. Our first book today is The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Good morning, students. Are you excited to be joining me in story time today? Let's start the book. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. For my sister, Krista. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. Hayden, can you tell me what fruit this is? Apples. How many apples do you see? One. One? Great job. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. Hassan? He ate orange. He ate orange? You see the orange? That's great. Let's see what he ate on Tuesday. One. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. Elena? What fruit do you see here now? Um, strawberries. Strawberries. Um, Let's count how many strawberries he ate. One, two, one three, four. four. Four strawberries. Great. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. Kendrick, what did he? Which fruit is this one? Um, um, oranges. oranges. And strawberries. And strawberries, yes. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. Strawberries. One Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. I think he's going to have a stomach ache. Do you think he's going to have a stomach ache? Yes. Yes, me too. Let's see. That night, he had a stomach ache. See? You were right, you guys. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. What? Yes, a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and what do you think's gonna happen? Butterfly. He's gonna become a butterfly? Yes. Me too. Let's continue and see. He was a beautiful butterfly. That was a great book, wasn't it? Did you guys like it? <laughs> you did? <laughs> well, it was a great book. I liked it. Well, I have another book. It's called The Very Quiet Cricket. One warm day from a tiny egg, a little cricket was born. Welcome, chirped a big cricket rubbing his wings together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good morning, whizzed the locust, spinning through the air. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Hello, whispered a praying mantis, scraping its huge front legs together. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good day, crunched a worm, munching its way out of an apple. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. 
Hi, bubbled a spittlebug, slurping in a sea of froth. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Good afternoon, screeched a cicada, clinging to a branch of a tree. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened, not a sound. Class, do you know what type of bee. insect this is? Bee? No, a bee. bumblebee. A bumblebee. Good job. How are you, hummed a bumblebee, flying from flower to flower. Oh, yeah. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together, but nothing happened. Not a sound. Good evening, wired a dragonfly. Gliding above the water, the little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. Good night, buzzed the mosquitoes, dancing among the stars. The little cricket wanted to answer, so he rubbed his wings together. But nothing happened, not a sound. A lunar moth sailed quietly through the night, and the cricket enjoyed the stillness. As the lunar moth disappeared silently into the distance, the cricket saw another cricket. She too was a very quiet cricket. Then he rubbed his wings together one more time. And this time, who, what do you guys think is going to happen? He's going to make a sound. You do? I think he's going to make a sound too. Let's continue and see. He chirped the most beautiful sound that she had ever heard. Which insect did you guys like out of that book? Which one did you like, Leon? Did you guys enjoy the book? Yes. Great. Coming up, we'll read The Mixed Up Chameleon. It's very fun to be in bed, trust me. So much fun. When I was an eighth grader and I saw them march and I was like, wow, I need to be a part of this. Our main performing group is the varsity band. That encompasses our marching band and our varsity concert band. We also have the, uh, the jazz ensemble. It's unique, so we're really lucky to have that. I'm very methodical about teaching. I try to stay up to date because I want my students to have the best information that I can pass along to them. He's excellent. He commands a sort of drive that we didn't exactly have. I lead the class, but I also believe in the students self-assessing their work. The leadership is led by the students. We lead most of the practices. It's basically just student-led. I, mean, I think it's important for them to take that kind of ownership. If you want to be a musician, you gain extremely important music skills, music techniques. One, two, three. There's so many opportunities for fellowship, and band is a family, and you develop that, that small community. Uh, where you support each other, not only musically, but uh, in many ways. Really, without the band, the football games would be lame. Without the band, you wouldn't really have the pep rallies. The band is like a good foundation for the school spirit. If you want to join band, just do it. I think band was the best part of my high school career. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS-TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Storytime. I am Joesha Williams, uh, and we are excited for our next story called The Mixed Up Chameleon. The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carle. On a shiny green leaf sat a small green chameleon. It moved onto a brown leaf tree and turned brownish. Then it rested on a red flower and turned reddish. When the chameleon mo moved slowly across the yellow sand, it turned yellowish. You could hardly see it. Boys and girls, can you believe it's an animal that could turn colors? Mm. When the chameleon was warm and had something to eat, it turned sparkly green. But when it was cold and hungry, can you guys tell me what color it turned? Blue and gray and brown. Blue and green, green. 
Okay, I think it's like gray and kind of dull. Don't you think? When the chameleon was hungry, it sat, until, it sat still and waited. Only its eyes moved up and down and sideways until it spotted a fly. The chameleon's long, sticky tongue shot out and caught the fly. And that was it life. It wasn't very exciting, but one day, the chameleon saw a zoo. It had never seen so many beautiful animals. Elon, can you tell me what animal this is? Bear. Polar bear? What about this? A turtle. It's a turtle. Yes, Leon, what about this animal? Pitch. Oh? Pitch. It's a seal. And what about this elephant? And what about this? And what about this? What about this? A reindeer. And what are these? Fifo. The community thought, how small am I and how slow and weak. I wish I could be big like a polar bear. And the community wish came true. But was it happy? No. I wish I could be handsome like. Can anybody tell me what the chameleon wants to be handsome like? Um, a duck. Or a flamingo? A duck. A flamingo? Great job. I wish I could be smart like a fox. fox. Yes, Elena. I wish I could swim like a. I wish I was a. Reindeer, yes. I wish I could see things far away like a giraffe. Great job. I wish I could hide in a shell like a turtle. He's a weird. I know, turtles are weird. I wish I could be strong like a elephant. Elephant, yes. <laughs> Do you guys think that's going to be a problem, that he's so many different animals? I wish I could be funny like a, a seal. <laughs> I wish I could be like people. Just like a fly flew by, the chameleon was very hungry, but the chameleon had a very mix-up. It, it was all types of little things. I couldn't, I couldn't catch the fly. I wish I could be myself, the Camille's wish came true, and it caught the fly. The and boys and girls, did you enjoy that book? Yes. I like it. Yes. <laughs> the Little Mouse and the Red Ripe Strawberry and the Big Hungry Bear by Don and Aubrey Woods, illustrated by Don Woods. Hello, Little Mice, what are you doing? Oh, I see. Can anybody tell me what the little mice is going to do? Get the strawberry. Get the strawberry, yes. I think so, too. Are you going to pick that red, ripe strawberry? Mm -hmm. But the little mouse, haven't you heard of the big hungry bear? Do you think that's going to be a problem for the little mouse and the big hungry bear? I think so, too. Oh, how that bear loves red, ripe strawberries. The big hungry bear can smell the red ripe strawberry, pick the mouth away. Boom, boom, boom. The bear tromped through the floors with his big hungry feet and, and find that strawberry. You think the mouse is going to be worried now? Yeah. yeah. No matter where it is hidden or who is guarding it, or how it is disguised. She smell it. They put some glass in the snow. <laughs> Quickly, there's only one way in the whole wide world the red ripe strawberry can, can be hidden from the big hungry bear. Where? Cut it into two. Do you guys think you're going to split it with anybody? Yeah, he's going to share with you. And we will both eat it. 
we will oh, both eat it all up. Yum, thought the mouse. The end. Boys and girls, did you enjoy that book? Yes. yes. Okay, we have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll read Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Stay tuned. GHSTV started in 1982, and it was just a couple of cameras, a couple of on-air personality, and it's really grown into what you see today. It's a multi-million dollar studio with top-of-the-line technology. Being able to operate you know, all of the machinery in the control room, uh, being able to use all of our software and hardware that we have around the studio uh, is a great skill because this is top-of-the-line equipment. I feel like this class has brightened my horizon. It's something that I never thought I would be doing, um, especially as a student. GHS TV is probably one of the most hands-on experiences a student will ever get in their lifetime. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Nothing really has just the vibe that we have here. Especially after you finish, you get a real rush of, wow, I just did that. By the time a student graduates from Germantown High School, they will know pretty much every position there is from producing to directing um, to on-air work. You learn time management, you learn organization, you learn how to work with people, how to better communicate with people. We put a lot on them and they have to be able to have the responsibility and the knowledge to get everything that we ask them. I had very little experience. Uh, so in the past three years, the skills that I've learned have, have absolutely exponentially grown. The class has actually helped me figure out that I want to go to college for journalism. When a student graduates, they are the best possible version of themselves that they can be. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Storytime. I'm Brendaja Woods. Our next story today is Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Hey, kids, have you read Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See before? No. no. Well, we're going to see what it's about today. So this book is called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by Bill Jr., Bill Martin Jr. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? What do you think the red bird is going to see? You don't know? Let's see. I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Have you ever seen a purple cat before? Yeah. No. You haven't? I haven't either. Yes. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Children, children, what do you see? What do you see? We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. Wasn't that a great book? Yes. Thank you for tuning in to Storytime. For more information on our programming, please check us out on the web at ghstv.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Storytime. Now we're going to do our apple tree song. Can you sing it with me? Way up high in the apple tree, two little apples.
people smiling at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. 